Well, we are back now at 8-11, launching a new series called Battling Addiction today to shine a light on a situation that's happening all over the country. That's right, and the number of people impacted by alcohol and drug addiction is really staggering. According to the National Survey on Drug Use and Health, about 20 million Americans over the age of 12 are living with addiction. And if you want to put that in perspective, that is more than the population of the entire state of New York. Few diseases cause more deaths. Each day, more than 100 people die from drug overdoses. That's an increase of more than 300 percent just over the last two decades. So in the coming weeks, we will highlight the dangers of addiction and the warning signs, but we'll also talk about the success stories. And we start with Chef Ashish Alfred. Today, he is a rising star in the Washington, D.C. area food scene. But just five years ago, the guy was literally waking up in a gutter, battling the demons of addiction. He hopes that by sharing his story, he can show other addicts out there there is life beyond the disease. Is it fair to say this is one of those spots that you'll always remember? This, me and my dentist will always remember this spot. Um, so I got really high in my apartment. And I thought I was running and I fell. Um, I hit my face really hard and I'd spit out a bunch of my teeth. A bunch of your teeth? Yeah, about five. If you met Chef Ashish Alfred today, what you would see is the intensity, passion, and focus required of a rising culinary star. Owner of not one, but three celebrated restaurants. <laughs> a man beloved by his family and friends. But just five years ago, he almost threw it all the way, including his own life. The straw that broke the camel's back was uh, when I broke in here and I took $4,000 in cash out of the safe. Went home and got high. Ashish was an addict. First alcohol, then cocaine, then heroin. His rock bottom, stealing from his own restaurant. You wanted to commit suicide? Oh, yes. Why? Because why stick around? I was failing everyone around me. I had lost the respect of anybody close to me. The one person who I, I did really care about, my mother, um, you know, she at one point couldn't stand the sight of me. His mother, Veena, and father, Rajesh, an alcoholic himself, immigrated from India shortly before Ashish was born. I'd never really felt like I fit anywhere. You know, we were the only Indian people that I knew. Were you bullied? Yeah. Just because you're Indian? Uh, for a lot of reasons. I mean, I was small. I kind of came off as insecure because um, I felt insecure at home. At 13, Ashish discovered alcohol as a way to fit in. When does the drinking become drugs? The drinking became drugs probably around 15 or 16. I'd fallen in with a group of guys. The more violent I could act when I was around them, the more accepted I would be into that group. Cocaine came quick. Cocaine came around 17. How did it make you feel? I felt on top of the world. It gave me a sense of confidence that I didn't find it before then. Did your parents suspect anything? No. Barely graduating high school, Ashish convinced his parents to send him to New York City to the French Culinary Institute. I got settled into my apartment, and then that night, I went out and got hammered. <clears throat> my mother had bought me a cross, um, and uh, I sold it for cocaine. Despite his addictions, Ashish excelled in culinary school. He moved back to Bethesda, Maryland, and opened his first restaurant. 25-ish year old chef, like two years out of culinary school, has no business opening a restaurant. But it was, you know, kind of my addict's ego that was telling me, you got this, hold my beer. Two years later, the same day he stole from his restaurant safe, his 67-year-old mother showed up at his door. I said, either you will go to a re rehab or you will not see me again. I'm not your mother, you're not my son. The next day, Ashish checked into a 28-day inpatient rehab program. Sober for the first time in a decade, he returned to his Bethesda neighborhood to rebuild his restaurant and reputation. I was not gonna be sober and then spend the rest of my life walking on eggshells. So for me, my sobriety had to mean that I could go wherever I wanted to go and do whatever I wanted to do. I just wouldn't drink or use. So that's how I live my life today. Here's the money shot. Wow. Butter. Butter. Wow. Butter. Butter. 
Ashish has been clean and sober five years now, even recently cooking at New York's famed James Beard House. Very simple, crab on top. He's hoping his story can help other addicts get to the other side. What did you discover about yourself? I discovered that it's okay to not always feel okay. I have bad days. I mean, my, my worst day sober is still better than my best day messed up. Get in there, camera guy. There you go. Wow, powerful cool. story. We're happy to have Chef Ashish Alfred with us here in Studio 1A. Good to see you, brother. Happy to be here. Thank you for having we, me. We talked about this down in Maryland. You know, my father got out of rehab about six months ago. You've been out about five years. And talk to me about the good days and the bad days. How do you get through those days? You know, I meant what I said. Uh, you know, my, my, my worst day sober is still better than my best day messed up. Um, and, you know, I think just keeping it simple is what works for me. You know, I tell people, you don't have to be sober for the rest of your life. You just got to be sober for the rest of today. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so all I got to do is wake up, try to be a good person all day, and then go to bed and wake up and do it again the next day. They always talk about people who end up making a step like you did. They have to make it, make the decision on their own. Your mom came to your door and said it's either this or that. I mean, did you make your own decision after she went that far? Describe that moment in there. And as I told Craig yeah. um, w when we met, it, it you know I was I was ready to kill myself, and I, I I I guess I didn't have the courage to do it outright, but I was slowly killing myself. So I think <laughs> while I might not have. Um, taking the initial step, I was ready. You were ready. I was ready. And I think that's what kind of made it a little easier on me is that when I was done, I was just done. Yeah. I, I had no desire to go back to that. I wow. just, could you even have imagined <laughs> all that you have attained <laughs> since then in your darkest moment yeah. when you thought you were giving up on life? If no. I said, oh, no, 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 my trial, <laughs> you will be here in five years. <laughs> you will be cooking at the James Beard Institute. Yeah. You will have three restaurants. Yeah. I would want some of what you were smoking. <laughs> 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 Savannah doesn't share. Uh, but you did it. You have three of the most, you've got three huge restaurants in the Baltimore, D.C. area. Accomplished, they're incredible. Did you ever worry then, or do you still worry that the pressure that it takes to keep up yeah. those three restaurants, especially in, you know, the restaurant business, some may argue, not exactly a healthy yeah. environment, would possibly jeopardize your sobriety? And how do you deal with that? You know, I think if I wasn't doing this, I, I'd, I'd be somebody that ran three marathons a week, or I'd be one of those lawyers that worked 100 hours a week. Um, so I, I think this definitely, it keeps me sane. The busyness of it keeps me going. Um, yes, it is a lot of pressure, but I knew that getting into it. Are you a better chef today than you were five years ago? I'd like to think so. <laughs> I'd like by, to think by so. the way, yeah. Duck Duck Goose. Yeah, just named. Just named by Southern Living Magazine as one of the best restaurants awesome. in the South. Awesome. Congrats uh, again. Thank you. Thank you. And I can Thank attest you. that your, your food is as remarkable as yours. Are y'all going to cook or something? We did, oh, it's going to be, it's online by the way. The oh. two of us, uh, we did some cooking. Made What'd you cook? Filet. Oh. And where is it now? Steak Steak au poivre? Not just any steak, steak au poivre. Ooh, I like wow. that. Craig, Craig did most of the work. Pepper. Pepper. I just, I stood Look there. Like, I really know that. something new. Craig, Craig did most of the work. Thank, Thank you. We're so you. proud of Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chef, great story. Thanks for telling it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Today.com slash food for the cooking. All right, cool.